How do you go from helping your dad run a sports memorabilia business to uncontrolled tirades in a courtroom? The story of Will, One Touch, Jamet. Will Jamet didn't start out as a sports card scammer. He grew up in the industry, helping his father run an auction house in Oregon. After his father passed away in 2009, Jamet tried to follow in his footsteps by starting his own auction house, named Heroes of Sport. The company struggled and only ran one catalog auction. In an interview with sportscardmagazine.com in 2013, Jamet said the auction process just wasn't for him. Starting a new business proved hard, and Jamet stumbled getting Heroes of Sport off the ground. It took two years after his failed auction house venture before Jamet returned to make a big push in the sports card world. His plan was to launch a repack product under the name Heroes of Sport. With only four cards per box and a price tag of $500, it was certainly going to gain some attention around the hobby. The cards inside the product were ones from Jamet's personal collection and others he purchased online or at card shows. Here's a sampling of some of the best cards available in the first offering from Heroes of Sport. Jamet went all out to promote his new product, which released in early January 2013. He paid for advertising on Beckett.com, where they ran a 16-week promotion where collectors could acquire points by buying boxes of Heroes of Sport. The person with the most points would win a Babe Ruth 1930s autographed baseball bat. But an early misstep for Heroes of Sport was the decision to let sports card group breaker Bumo launch his new product and be the first to stream a break online. Bumo, whose real name is Matt Collier, is a former greeter at the retail chain Kmart. While Bumo may be used to give you a friendly smile, around the sports card world he has a reputation as an erratic hothead. Calmly opening cards one minute, then spun into a swear-laced rant the next. Bumo ran several group breaks for the Heroes of Sport debut product, charging people over $150 for each card. But Bumo and his business partner, David Gelf Gelfman, would purchase spots into some of their own breaks. And suspiciously, Bumo and Gelf kept winning the best cards. But it wasn't just the decision to use Bumo during the product launch that doomed Heroes of Sport's first product. Many people who did shell out the $500 a box complained that the value just wasn't there. Weeks in, terms like Ponzi scheme were thrown around when it was found Jamin was buying cards on eBay that ended up in Heroes of Sport boxes, even after the January launch. This means the product wasn't fully packed out on release day. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think you can stop all the conspiracy theory if you make a product, you pack it out, and you have a checklist online. And you basically allow breakers, distributors, you know, place a pre-order like every other manufacturer. And uh, knowing that, like, there has been, well, it seems like there has been cards that it's like they're packing as they go makes it completely, in my, in my mind, like, not legit. In addition to packing out the product after release day, hot boxes began showing up after bad reviews came pouring in from the hobby. These hot boxes were not a part of the original Heroes of Sport promotion and only appeared after it was clear the product was a disaster. To further cast out on the legitimacy of Heroes of Sport, Bumo, the very group breaker chosen to debut the product, won a grand prize from Heroes of Sport, a 1934 autographed New York Yankees baseball that included the prize signatures of Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig. Shockingly, the worst scams were yet to come from both Heroes of Sport and Will Jamet. Reeks of, uh, you know, some people who are running this company have no clue what they're doing. Uh, right. So that's what it reeks of, and I'd be stunned, stunned if they're still making a product 
in another year. Stunned. Yeah. You want to move the camera around or anything? I'm 100%. Just be good. You worry worried about what I'm doing? You're a little low, but. Yeah. Okay, fix all that. We're right, go ahead. Whoa. You ready? Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, here we go. Woo! Jame, it proved the haters wrong throughout 2013 and 2014. Here is a sport released several products during that time, many being gobbled up and sold by online sports card group breakers. Things were finally going well for Jamet. Respected group breakers shook off any initial concerns and started breaking Jamet's products alongside those of traditional brands like Upper Deck, Panini, and Tops. But seemingly out of nowhere, another bomb gets dropped on Heroes of Sport. Accusations of employee stealing sends the company into chaos. The chief operating officer and J. Mitt's old high school friend, Jesse Craig, leaves Heroes of Sport to focus on a new chapter in real estate. For almost all of 2015, nobody knows what happened to Heroes of Sport. A cryptic tweet from Heroes of Sport gave promise of a new beginning. Jamet was back in business with his old high school pal, Jesse Craig. Craig started a group breaking business, Bros Breaks, and was going to be the exclusive breaker for Heroes of Sport. 25 cards were previewed for a new repack product called Heroes of Sport The Truth. But by the January 26th launch date, it was a disaster and raised suspicions on Jamet and Craig. 22 of the 25 cards previewed for the Heroes of Sport product were sold at one time right after release day by eBay consignment seller PWCC. Craig later claimed nothing nefarious happened and says he ended all business ties with Jamet shortly after the failed break to once again focus on real estate. Jamet, on the other hand, fell into a very dark place. November 2016, here's some real trouble for you. Heroes of Sport owner Will Jamet was popped on one felony of unlawful use of a weapon, and not one, not two, but three more misdemeanors in the state of Oregon. Things were in a downward spiral for Jamet. A domestic dispute landed him in jail. He was given a no contact order for his wife and kids. Shockingly, he popped off twice in a courtroom, lashing out at the judge and earning more prison time. Jamet's mental state was fragile. Certainly, he wouldn't return to the sports card world, would he? All right, it's been, what, four years, five years almost? But they're back. Heroes of Sport is back. And we have the 2019 Cardsmith Edition. Fresh out of jail, Jamet returned to the hobby thanks to some help from friends. Blowout sports cards, Cardsmith breaks, Grand Slam collectibles, and Leighton sports cards agreed to be the exclusive dealers for Heroes of Sport's comeback product, 2019 Iconic Heroes. But nobody could have predicted what would happen next. A massive scandal erupted in the sports card world. The New York Times, Forbes, The Washington Post, and other major news outlets ran stories covering the fraud. A small group of collectors on a sports card message board were uncovering thousands of cards that had been trimmed or altered to improve their condition. Dozens of card dealers were found to be trimming cards, including Will Jamet. Jamet was able to get away with his card trimming scam for years. He sold his altered cards through eBay consignment seller PWCC. In fact, PWCC had hired one of his old pals and business partner, Jesse Craig, 
With Craig now at PWCC, Jamet sold hundreds of altered cards through the company, including nine Donruss Elite Mike Trout autographs that were all found to be trimmed. Jamet wasn't just selling trim cards through PWCC. The fraudulent cards were also inserted into his 2019 Iconic Heroes product. Dozens of trim cards were found to be inside. The exclusive group breakers of the product, blowout cards, cardsmith breaks, grand slam collectibles, and Leighton sports cards were all sent scrambling to explain why, after all these years, they were still supporting Will Jamet and Heroes of Sport. Bumo, I know you might get a day off or two from greeting at Kmart. I know you're listening. I know that Will Jamet had to return some one touches that he bought on Amazon. So he might not have enough money to pay for his internet connection. In August 2019, the FBI issued subpoenas to various sports card dealers in regards to the card trimming scandal. It's not known if Jamet received one. By June 2020, Jamet was able to get his felony weapons violation reduced to a misdemeanor. He doesn't appear active in the sports card world. For now.